Hello everyone, welcome back to another deep dive into a Law of Magic from Warhammer The Old World. We are your Law Masters today and we will be taking you through the Law spell by spell, giving you the hot takes and an overview of kind of where we think the spells will be useful. Today we are looking at demonology for all the hexes and enchants your heart desires. Um, those who make the study of the realm of chaos that twisted and warped nether world in which the ruinous powers reside are known as demonologists. And their signature spell is the summoning. <laughs> Let's dive right in. <laughs> um, so the summoning is a magic missile. It has a casting value of nine plus and a range of 18 inches. And the target enemy unit suffers 2d6 strength four hits with an AP of minus one. That's strong. <laughs> That's really cool. I love that spell. Yeah, so straight away I was looking at it and I was like, okay, so it's like a fireball um, from the law of um, Battle, of Battle magic. magic, but it's got an AP of one instead, but it has a slightly shorter range of 18 inches. But then I thought, well, Actually, I don't know that the range of 18 inches matters that much because um, because magic missiles are cast in the shooting phase, so you still have your movement phase. So it's 18 inches plus your movement. So if you've got a, a wizard that can move a bit swiftly, then yeah. it doesn't matter. You'll be able to get, get this off um, <laughs> and fine. Uh, it, you're going to be playing a Warriors of Chaos list or something like that. You're going to be aggressive. You're going to be plodding up the table, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. So, um, yeah, I really like it, to be honest. It's just, we were saying the fireball is great for um, chaff clearance and things like that. Um, and this is it still does that. But with the additional AP of minus one, you can start to get into some other stuff as well. Some meaty targets, things like your, even your Bretonian knights will be scared of this. They've got a three plus armor. That's going to go to a four plus. So fifty percent of the time, you are gonna you are gonna get them, especially if you if you roll big on that two d six and you get eleven or twelve hits. Um, you know, you, it's something for, that people are going to be worried about. That is for sure. I think that is a really good signature spell. Yeah, I agree, Dan. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the law itself. So spell number one is Steed of Shadows which is a conveyance spell. It has a casting value of nine and a range of 15 inches. This spell can only target friendly models whose troop type is infantry. If the target friendly unit is not fleeing and has not already moved during this movement phase, it gains the fly a 12 special rule until your next start of turn sub phase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that could be really gnarly. Giving like a unit of warriors of chaos fly. Mm. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I would love to see that. Um, yeah, I was thinking, how would I use it? And I was thinking perhaps a hero on foot could be quite, quite cheeky, something like that. Um, get them where they need to go. Um, but of mm. course, you know, you've got to make sure that they are tanked up to be out or there on their own. Um, but that could be a bit of a surprise. Um, I like these kind of spells um, that do things like that. You know, you you can use it to get over that piece of like impassable um, or difficult terrain. You can use it to um, to leapfrog someone's chaff, so you don't have to go through them. You know, it's just it gives you lots of lots of cool options, doesn't it? Um, I think it's 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 a good spell, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing it used. The only thing is when you talk about like warriors of chaos units and things like that they've got quite a big footprint on the table and you have to make sure that you do actually have space to land that unit so sometimes yeah. fly is better on smaller units than it is bigger units um but fly 12 that's the thing is as well isn't it is that your movement characteristic will go up to that yeah um so it could actually just be used just to make your models on that a little bit quicker even if you don't take use of fly, depending on the unit, because yeah, it's absolutely. notoriously a little bit slower. Um, oh, the next spell. I like this one. Gathering Darkness. At the Demonologist's command, strange forms gather about their foe. 
their whispers taunt and draining their enemy's courage. This is a hex spell with a casting value of 9 and a range of 12. Until your next start of turn subphase, the target enemy unit suffers a minus 2 modifier to its initiative characteristic to a minimum of 1, a minus 2 modifier to its leadership characteristic to a minimum of 2, and they cannot use their general's inspiring presence special rule. This spell may target an enemy unit engaged in combat. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think the minus two to leadership, and that's enough. Like giving it, it minus two to <laughs> initiative and the lack of inspiring presence. I think that's really brutal as well. Yeah, I, I'm. It's really cool to see spells like this in the game because when we were going through the articles and and they first showed how combat works and how psychology works and how breaking and fleeing works um it's much more difficult now to outright break a unit and force it to flee and chase it down um you're going to be in sort of multiple combats going backwards and forwards for a bit longer now mm -hmm. and really how you're going to win games quickly and get those victory points is by taking banners and destroying units and the easiest way or the quickest way of doing that is is by just beating them in combat, breaking them, and chasing them down. Um, and this is a spell that is going to get you to be able to do that. Um, so it's it's massive. You know, a minus two to your leadership and not being able to use your generals, inspiring presence. Really, you are forcing that, that dice roll there if you win yeah. combat where potentially they're going to flee. So I think this is an incredible spell. Um, this is... This is one of the top spells in the game for me. It has a casting value of nine. Um, so it's going to be difficult for your level two casters to cast. Your natural dice roll on average is going to be a seven plus two. You could get there, but you're going to want to take a level four, really, and to, to try and make sure that you are getting this spell in those key moments. Yeah. And this is the first spell I think I've seen where I really want to build a list around, you know. It's a, almost an auto include. I want a, a level four with the law familiar just to have this spell chosen. Mm. Every time. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, okay, so the next spell is Demonic Familiars. Um, this is an assailment spell with a casting value of eight plus, and its range is combat. And the effect is a single enemy unit the cast is engaged in combat with suffers 2d6 strength, 2 hits, with no armor save permitted. But ward and regeneration saves can be attempted as normal. I've, I still think this is good. I think it's very, very potent. You, know, you can roll it against anything. It's going to be effective. Even if it drops one or two, two knights or some smaller infantry models, it'd be worthwhile. I think strength 2 is, is rough. Um, to be honest, um, against certain targets, because um, it's going to be it is going to be difficult to wound. You're not going to get too much off. I think you're right against knights um, if they are if they're you know normal lowly human knights and they're not jacked up, <laughs> kind of like monstrous <laughs> cavalry or something. Yeah. Um, then yeah, that's probably your best bet for it. I think it's okay. Um, yeah. And I I think it's a bit situational. I don't think it's. I think the thing is, it's it's more damage it's in combat than your mage is ever going to do in the game, isn't it? Like he's never going to punch anyone that hard. So I, yeah. I think it'd be unfair if it was a free plus. I think it would have been too powerful if it's a strength free. Part of me. Mm, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, it's it's fine. I think it's just it suffers a bit from being spell number three when spell number two is so good. <laughs> is what I think. Yeah, I think yeah, a different there order, is maybe that. I'd have a different opinion, but I think because Gathering Darkness is so good, I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, all right. Um, okay, next we have Demonic Vessel, um, which is an enchantment spell, has a casting value of ten. So again, quite expensive to cast, um, but until the end of this turn, the caster, their mount, and any unit they join have a plus one modifier to their strength and attacks characteristic to a maximum of 10 and improve their armor piercing characteristics of their weapons by one. Yeah, boy. That is gnarly. That's really good. That's sick. I just can't believe, like, plus one strength and attack. 
in an army that's probably going to be quite punchy is is a lot. Yeah, and and plus one armor piercing oh, as well. Yeah. Um, it just makes your normal units that much better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can take a unit with like a normal kind of boring profile, you know, one strength three attack, and suddenly they've got two strength four, four attacks with, a, with armor piercing. Um, you know, and then if you if you multiply that on a unit that's already quite good or already has a weight of attacks, then it, it makes them fantastic. Um, you can really kind of just just change a unit into into something that your opponent is thinking, I don't have to worry too much about that. To, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. The only downside is it's quite difficult to cast, but yeah, but you could you could try and power scroll it through or something like that. I mean, I'd be I'd be looking at my um at my dispel scroll at this point and thinking, right, okay, um, yeah, not having that one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> really like it. Um, but there, there there are so many great hexes and enchants in the in in this law. Um, next is vortex of chaos. Um, this is a magical vortex with a casting value of 8 plus and a range of 15, and it remains in play. Place a small 3 inch blast template so that its central hull is within 15 inches of the caster. Whilst in play, this template is treated as dangerous terrain. The template moves d6 inches in a random direction during every start of turn subphase. Any unit, friend or foe, the moving template touches or moves suffers d6 plus one strength three hits each with an ap of dash mm, i feel this one's really underwhelming compared to the rest of the lore um it's not bad it's just not as good as everything else here in my opinion yeah d6 plus one strength three hits with an ap of dash um, I'm saying you're going to swap that out for the signature spell and do 2d6 strength 4 hits with an AP of minus 1 and forget the fact that it's dangerous terrain. Yeah. If if um, you got to move it, range. Yeah. If you got to choose the direction of it, maybe I'd be a bit more inclined to take it. But because it's random, at one game, it's going to come back at you and, and ruin, your, <laughs> ruin your super night buff you've just created and they're all going to die of a dangerous train track tester. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, it's, it's not for me. I've got to say it's not for me. I think, you know, if I roll this one, I'm swapping it out, I think is what I would say. Um, and lastly, we have demonic vigor, which is an enchant spell with a casting value of nine, a range of 15 inches. And the effect is until the end of this turn, the target friendly unit gains a plus one modifier to its movement, toughness, and initiative characteristics to a maximum of 10. It's gone, Dan, it's gone from a list I build the wizard round, like gathering darkness. And it's now I'm building an entire unit around how how many buffs I can get on it. <laughs> I'm turning like a little unit you weren't too worried about into just an absolute train that you're not going to want to go anywhere near. Yeah, I like the plus one initiative because I think I feel like it's really important in a game now where you can stop the front rank from attacking back if you've got a higher initiative. Anything that increases your initiative and gives you that chance to strike first and do that is really good. Um, <clears throat> plus one to movement is nice because we've talked a lot in the past about zoning and about making sure you get in those charges. So it makes you more likely to get your charge. Then it makes you more likely to strike first. And if your opponent is attacking you back, it gives you that toughness. I mean, it's what's nice about having the toughness as well is that it makes it worthwhile casting it You know, when you're not in combat. You could cast this in the first turn if you think you're going to come under a bit of shooting. And it just gives you that little bit of defensiveness as well. <laughs> it's incredible, Dan. <clears throat> Yeah, this law is for if you want your hexes and enchants, isn't it? Those are the those are the standout spells. Um, I think that the the signature spell is also good as well. Um, 
but it's it's a tricky spell. It's a tricky spell law. You're going to want an experienced wizard to cast this. You know, it's not like Battle Magic where a lot of the spells are cast on sevens, and and your level two will, will have a good go at casting it. Some of these are cast on tens. You know, yeah. it is quite it is quite difficult to cast. You're going to want to have a level four, really. Uh, you know, level three or four caster if you're going to take this spell to to guarantee you get the spells off. So you are going to have to put the points investment in to get the yeah. payoff of having these. Right. I would consider putting a wand of jet on this wizard to get an extra plus one to cast everything. Mm. Just to really, because you're going to, I'm, I'm in my mind's eye, I'm building a unit around this wizard and him having the law familiar. And I'm taking demonic vigor, demonic vessel. I want these spells off. Yeah. I'm giving him that plus one every day. So, what are your top four spells, Tom? You've got your law familiar. So what four? My law familiar. I'm taking demonic figure, demonic vessel, gathering darkness, and if I'm building it in an infantry unit, probably steed of shadows, because mm. I think that would be really fun. I'm, I'm not mm. overly concerned about the summoning and demonic familiars, to be honest. How about you, Dan? Yeah. Um... For me, I'm not taking the Vortex of Chaos. I'm not overly fond of um, Demonic Familiars. I'm going for Gathering Darkness, Demonic Vessel, Demonic Vigor, because we want those hexes and enchants. And then my last one, I don't think I don't know that I'm going for Steed of Shadows, um, because, as I said, it can be quite difficult and cumbersome to move a big unit and, and land them with Fly. Mm. Um, I don't know. I think that I would probably be going for um, summoning for that 2d6 strength 4 yeah. AP1 damage. I think the good thing about the, the Warriors of Chaos is you don't need a massive unit of Warriors of Chaos now. They're going to be like 3 plus armor save walking around the table. If they can fly 12 inches up the board in a turn with mm. plus 1 toughness, so there's toughness 5, you shoot at them all day, mate. With your long, with your little wood elf bows, you go ahead. You ain't doing, <laughs> you ain't doing nothing to that. <laughs> just, uh, just notch an arcane bodkin there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was um, demonology. So let us know in the comments what you think. Let us know if you've been using it. Let us know what spells you are most excited about. And we will back be back next time when we'll be talking about which law, Tom. Dark magic. Dark magic. See you then. <laughs>